Hello and welcome back to math class today. Um, whether it's morning, afternoon, or evening, depending upon when you're looking at doing your math lesson, we are looking at rational numbers and the real world with Mrs. Hauk today. Um, remember, a rational number can either be a fraction, it can be a decimal that terminates, maybe I'll do 1.5, or it could be a decimal that repeats. Maybe I'll do 2.6161 and it keeps going and going and going and going. Okay, so those are rational numbers. Now we're graphing those rational numbers on a number line. Okay, let's look at our first problem here, for example. It says that the water level of a lake rose 1.5. 25 feet after it rained. We could read that 1 and 25 hundredths. Answer the questions below using the diagram below. So we have this diagram right here. But what I'd like to do first is I'd like to go ahead and let's plot this point. 1 and 25 hundredths. 1.25. Well, I obviously know that 1.25 has to be bigger than 1, but it's smaller than 2. Okay, so I have to know it has to come somewhere in between. Well, here's 0. If I move up to 1, hmm, I know 1 and a half would be, here's 1 and 2, 1 and a half would be right here, and 25 is half of that, so I'm going to put my dot right here. It's on the very first tick mark, so I'm actually counting by what we would call 25s, or some of you can think of it in terms of money as in quarters. So this is 1, 1.25, 150. So let's put here 125, 150, 175, and then we have the number 2. Okay, so we're counting by 25 hundredths, 0.25. So when it says, write a rational number to represent the situation. Well, here was my situation. Let's put a box around it. My situation was the water level of a lake rose 1.25 feet after it rained. Well, the number I hear in my story is 1.25. Hmm, is it positive or negative? What is it? You are correct. It is positive because I have the word rose. So it would be 1.25. Now, if I wanted to change this to a fraction, I could say that it's actually, for those of you that would like to know, it is actually equal to 1 and 1 fourth. Okay, but like I said, we're going to practice that later. So if you don't understand that, that's fine. Okay, let's look at part B. What two integers is 1.25 between on the number line? Well, thankfully, we went over here and we put the dot right here. Remember, what, it, what is an integer? An integer is a number, right? 0, 1, 2, 3, negative 4, negative 1. Well, here is my dot. Here is the integer 1, and here is the integer 2. Here's the integer 0. Here are my integers. If you notice, where's my dot? My dot is between 1 and negative 2. So what two integers is it between? I'm going to say it's between 1, oops, I said and positive 2, I mean. 1 and positive 2. What? Next, what is the length of each segment on the number line as a decimal and a fraction? Well, what I'm talking about, the length, that kind of is considered what we would call our scale, our scale. What are we counting by? I'm not really counting by ones because if I was, this would be zero, one, two, three, that would be four, but it's not, that's one. So I'm counting by some sort of rational number and we know we're counting by what we would call quarters, 25, point 25, or I can think 25, 50, 75, and then I have 1. So what I'm counting by are 25 hundredths. So I'm going to write it as a decimal, which would be like this. It says to write it as a fraction. Well, I'm going to tell you it, that is equal to 1 fourth. Okay, let's look at part D. Part D says, what will be the water level after it rained? 
graph the point on the number line. Well, if you recall, the water level of the lake rose 1.25 feet after it rained. Well, if you notice, here's the water level. It's already here at zero. And we already put the dot on here. We sh we're showing where the water increased already. I had us graph that point right away so that we could see our integers. So what will the water level be at after we graphed it? Well, it went from zero up to one and 25 hundredths. Okay, graph the point on the number line. We did that. We also know it doesn't say what, it didn't say what will the energy integer be. It says what will be the water level. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to label that it's going to be 1.25 feet. So we'll label that feet. Okay, remember if you need to pause the video to keep up, please do so. All right, I'm going to move my book here a little bit so we can see the next problem. It says here, after two weeks have passed, the water level of the lake is now the opposite of the water level when it rained. What will be the new water level? Graph the point on the number line and explain how you determined your answer. Well, if you remember, the water was, was at zero and so when it rained, the water level moved all the way up here to 1.25. I have to figure out what the opposite is. Well, from 0 up to 1.25, positive. The opposite would be 1.25, but it would be negative. Hmm. So we need to figure out, remember, we're counting by 25 hundredths, 25, 50, 75, 1, negative 1.25, negative 1.25. 50, negative 1.75, and then we're at 2. So what would the opposite of positive 120, 125 be? The opposite would be negative 1.25. So we're going to come down here on our, on our paper here, and we're going to write, first of all, we graph the point, but what will the new water level be? It will be negative 1.25 feet. Okay, and then it says explain how you determine your answer. Well, if you think about it, if the water level would be at 1.25 feet above, the opposite would be below, and so we're going to go ahead and write that on our paper. All right, so let me move this up so you guys can see what I put here. So we already know that the opposite of 1.25 is negative 1.25 feet. And for my explanation, I wrote the sentence, if the water level was 1.25, the opposite would be negative 1.25 or 1.25 below zero. So go ahead and write down that explanation on your paper. If you need to pause the screen so that you can get it written down, please do so. All right, so let me start my book out here again um, as we were writing things down. Um, the next question I had here was, state a rational number that is not an integer whose value is less than 1.25 and describe its location between two consecutive integers on the number line. Well, remember, a rational number, those are not our integers, our whole numbers that we are counting by. Remember, the rational numbers are our fractions and decimals that we've been working with. I want to find um, a rational number that is not an integer, so it can't be 1, 2, 3, and it's less than 1.25. Well, if we look up here at the number line, if you numbered it like I asked you to, you have 1.25 here, and we want to find something that's less than. Well, one is less, but the problem is I can't pick one because the number one, I circled it because it's an integer. And the direction said that I could not pick an integer. So I'm going to pick um, 0 0.75 because it's less than that. So I'm going to see it's less than 1.25 and it's not an integer, it's a rational number. So I'm going to write down here. A rational number whose value is less 
then 1.25 I said is 0 0.75. All right, and now I have to tell you where it's located. I said it would be located between which two integers? It's between 0 and 1 on the number line. Remember, if you need to pause this for a second so that you can get this written down, please do so. I had to pick a rational number that was less than 1.25. I picked 0 0.75. Remember, I could not pick the number 1 because it is an integer, and I was supposed to pick a rational number. Because I picked 0 0.75, the directions also asked me to tell you between which two consecutive integers is my rational number. Well, if I look back up here at my number line, my 0 0.75 was right here. It's between, hmm, let's see, I circled my integers, 2, 1, 0, 1, and 2. 0 0.75 was the rational number I picked, and it was between 0 and 1. It was not between 1 and 2. It was between 0 and 1. Okay, so make sure that you get this written down. If you need to pause it to finish it, go ahead. Otherwise, you may go ahead and turn over to the next page, please. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at the problem set here for Lesson 6. Um, we're going to do this actually together, but I want for some of you to challenge yourself. If I ask you to look at these four rational numbers, okay, they're not integers because they, they're not really counting numbers. If I would have you look at these and write the opposite of each, would you do that? For example, 10 sevenths, the opposite would be negative 10 sevenths, okay? See if you can go ahead and fill in the other three. All right, well, let's see how you did. The opposite of negative 5 thirds would be positive 5 thirds. The opposite of 3.82 would be negative 3.82. The opposite of negative 6 and 1 half would be positive 6 and 1 half. So if you notice, the numbers we have are the same, but it's just one is positive and one is negative. Okay, let's move down to problem number two. I went ahead and picked an A for us. Let's see if you can recall what we did on Tuesday. Choose a non-integer between 0 and 1. Label it point A. So we're going to, I picked the non-integer. I want us to do one third. And then we have to do A and the opposite, which we're going to label B on the number line. Write values below the points. So let's see. I have 0 and I have the integer 1 and the integer negative 1. One third is not zero, it's not one, and it's not negative one. So it's going to have to come somewhere on this side because it's positive. Hmm, how many tick marks am I going to have to put here? Let's see, what did we remember about Tuesday? Oh, on Tuesday we learned we have to look at this denominator, three. And I have to break this into three close to equal spaces. So I'm going to put two tick marks. So I have one, two, three equal spaces. I'm going to put three equal spaces on this side as close as I can. I'm going to label them. Well, because I'm doing thirds, one third, two thirds, and this would be considered three thirds, which is the same as one. The opposites, negative one third, negative two-thirds, and negative three-thirds, which is the same as negative one. It told me to label my positive one, the one I picked for one-third is A, so I'm going to put a dot here and label it A. I had to label the opposite B. The opposite of one-third would be negative one-third, so I'm going to label it B. Okay. Let's look at the question that says right here. It says to draw a scale, um, what would include that would include basically both points? 
What could be the length of each segment? Well, we counted by thirds. We counted by those thirds. In words, it says create a real world situation that could represent the number line diagram. So this basically could mean you could write any kind of real world situation that you would want. You'd make up a story. My story could be something like, um, I ran one third mile. My sister ran one third mile uh, the opposite direction. Now, if you notice, I made up my own story. I wrote a story with sentences. I made sure that my story included the dots that I had plotted. I used the positive one-third for I ran one-third mile. I ran one-third mile. My sister ran one-third mile the opposite direction. And so I used both of my rational numbers in my story. Okay, if you need to pause this so that you can write this down, please do so. All right, so we're going to actually do one more problem together. We are going to skip problem number three for right now, so go ahead and circle number three. And we're going to jump down to problem number four. And we're going to see if we can solve this problem together. All right, so we have a nice little number line over here on the right side. Okay, our story says locate and label each point on the number line. Use the diagram to answer the questions. It says, Jill lives one block north of the pizza shop. It says, Janet's house is one third block past Jill's house. Jeffrey and Olivia are in the park four thirds block south of the pizza shop. Jenny's jazzy jewelry shop is located halfway between the pizza shop and the park. Well, I know I need to put a tally mark right here in the middle for my zero. And if I notice the denominator on all of them, it was thirds. So most likely the easiest thing for me to do is probably count with thirds. Okay. But I need to make sure I'm going to go all the way to four thirds because that Four thirds looks like it's a large number. So let's see. I'm going to go ahead and maybe see if I can get one, two, three, four, five tick marks under zero. Those would be my negatives. And then I'm going to put five tick marks above. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Well, I know I'm going to number by thirds. Um, here's zero. Positive numbers go on top. So this would be positive one third positive two-thirds, we have to write tiny, three-thirds, four-thirds, and five-thirds. And I'm going to do the same thing going down. This is going to be negative one-third, negative two-thirds, negative three-thirds, negative four-thirds, and negative five-thirds. Okay, so like I said, it's going to be pretty tiny writing, but as long as you can see and read your own writing, we should be able to do this. Okay, so now we've, we've counted, we've used our scale and our number line. Let's go back to our problem. It says, Jill lives one block north of the pizza shop. Well, we don't really have the pizza shop on here um, quite yet. Let's, so let's see, I think we're probably going to make the pizza shop be our zero. So let's go ahead and put here pizza shop, okay? Jill lives one block north of the pizza shop. Janet's house is one third block past Jill's house. Jeffrey and Olivia are in the park four thirds block south of the pizza shop. And Jenny's jazzy jewelry shop is located halfway between the pizza shop and the park. All right, so let's start here with Jill. She lives one block north. One. Well, I didn't count by once, so I have to decide which one of these fractions is the same as one. Hmm, one third cannot equal one. 
Two thirds cannot equal one. Three, let's see. Are those equal? Three thirds. Three divided by, those are equal. So we're going to say that Jill lives one block north of the pizza shop. So here's our pizza shop. So we're going to say, we're going to, north is going to be going this direction. So we're going to say that Jill is up here at the three thirds, which is equal to one. Okay, so let's put, and we'll just put Jill right there. Jill. Okay, let's go on to the next one. Janet's house is one third block past Jill's. Well, oh, that's great because we're counting by thirds, so that is easy. So if we go here to Jill's house and we're going to go one third past, we're going to put a dot up here and we're going to call this Janet's house. So we'll label it Janet's house. Okay, so we've done Jill's, we've done Janet's. Let's go down to Jeffrey and Olivia. Jeffrey and Olivia are in the park four thirds blocks south of the pizza shop. Well, if this is north, south would be the opposite direction. So we're going to put an S down here for south. And we're going to start at the pizza shop, which I told you to mark as zero. And we're going to go down four thirds, down one third, two thirds, three thirds, four thirds. We're going to put a dot right there. And we're going to call, and let's just put J and O for Jeffrey and Olivia, okay? So they're gonna be right down here at the park, J and O at the park. Okay, so we did this one. Let's check the next one. The next one says, Jenny's Jazzy Jewelry Shop is located halfway, oh boy, halfway between the pizza shop and the park. Here's the pizza shop, and here's Jeffrey and Olivia at the park. So we're going to have to find the middle of these two. So what I would probably do is I would probably take my fingers and put them here and I would move back and forth till I finally found the middle, which is right here at negative two thirds. I'm going to put a dot there and I'm going to say that that is Jenny's Jazzy Jewelry Shop. So I'm going to write the word jewelry just so it can help me remember that that's the jewelry shop. Okay, so now I have labeled and located all of the different locations. Part A says describe an appropriate scale to show all the points in the situation. Well, we 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 did we made our scale. We counted by thirds. Okay, we counted by thirds. Remember because that is what was the denominator in our problem. The last one says what number represents the location of Jenny's Jazzy Jewelry Shop? Well, let's go over here and look. Jenny's Jazzy Jewelry Shop is right here, and we already labeled our number line, and we said it was negative two-thirds, okay? Our explanation, okay, we're, we're going to talk about why. Well, our explanation is because we knew that the jewelry shop was going to be halfway between the park and the pizza shop, and we found that negative two-thirds was halfway between negative four-thirds and zero. Okay, so our lesson for today um, is finished. I have a Google form that I would like for you to fill out. You can always use your blue math book to help you. If you have any questions, please reach out to your teachers.